feel kind of silly having not have taken this muffler off because if I had had this muffler off that whole reassembly fiasco I was having getting that back in there would have not happened especially since I'm going to take the muffler off now anyways because I had noticed another problem with the saw when I had put it back together last time and that was that it didn't seem like the automatic boiler was working properly. To make matters worse, it seemed to me almost as if like there was a lot of oil just inside the body of the saw down inside here underneath the engine. I think oil is or had been leaking out in places it's not supposed to be leaking out of as opposed to coming out where it's supposed to be coming out. I noticed when I cleaned this all up, I noticed a crack in the plastic, which I will show you as soon as I finish getting this muffler out of the way. The screen still looks clean. I hadn't run it enough since I uh, since my last repair attempt to really clog the screen. Uh, I gotta pause the camera and go find that nut that fell down. Otherwise, I'll forget that I dropped it quick anatomy lesson on the uh, oiling system on this saw and uh, right in this area here is where the oil pump mounts uh, which I currently have out. The oil pump sucks up the oil from the tank through this tube here. This is a dowel that I have stuck in here to, to keep cleaner from getting down in there when I was washing this housing. Okay so this little hose right here is the suction hose this hose is where the oil pump draws oil up from the reservoir. Of course the oil reservoir is part of the body right in, in here. So there's the oil filler cap. So this is the tank. This is that hose that I just showed you. It runs down through a hole here and it runs through this fitting right here through the wall and then inside the tank on the end of this there's a little strainer. Okay. It's like a little fuel pickup filter, but it's for the oil. It's a strainer so that if any debris is in that tank, it doesn't get sucked up and run through the system. So you could have a problem with a the blockage there, okay, a restriction there. But in my case, because I think it's drawing oil up just fine, I think there's something else going on. But while we're on the subject, I want to also point out this little device right here, this little metal thing. See that thing? This little thing right here is a vent. It's a little venting valve to keep atmospheric pressure correct inside this oil tank. Okay? So that if, you know, it heats up because it's sitting in the sun or whatever, it doesn't cause the pressure to build up to the point where it's going to push oil out somewhere where it's not supposed to be. So that's the equalized pressure. By the way, this is actually has to be pushed out. I think I read in the manual this is pushed. You push it out so it falls inside the tank. Of course, you empty the tank at a time, clean your tank. You push this in so it falls inside the tank and remove it. And then you drive the new one in from this side. But uh, I think that's okay. I don't think that's my issue. Again, the oil pump lives here. The output of the oil pump, okay, a plastic piece. I guess I should grab the pump so we can see it. Right, so here's the oil pump assembly. That sits right down in here. So that nipple right there is where the suction line attaches to. So oil's drawn into the pump right at this point here. It's then pumped out through this plastic piece right here, which has a socket end, okay, that is supposed to click over this little nipple down in here. A little hard to see, but right there, that plastic nipple has an O-ring on it. It's actually easier to see from the backside here. Okay? So that's where the output of the oil pump pumps its oil into, and that seal is, is done by that O-ring right there. Then the oil goes into this part of the housing. This is actually part of the whole housing right here. There appears to be a plug that can be removed here. Okay, and there's a crack right there. So 
That's the thing that's concerning me right now is that crack. The other thing that I noticed, and getting back to the anatomy of how this thing works, so that plastic section of the housing that the oil is being pumped into is on the back side of right here. And there's a hole right here. So what happens is, is the oil gets pumped into that tube-like part and comes out this hole and fills this channel. And when your cutter bar is installed, this area right here lines up with this little area right here where there's a hole right here. So that's how the oil gets from the saw body into the into the cutter bar. So these holes need to be kept clean. You can see there's crap in there. Those, this has to be all cleaned out. You can even see the, the ghost where the paints are missing. Perfectly same shape as that. So I'm thinking if there's any kind of a blockage, okay, in this system, that the oil pressure built by the pump is gonna build up and if this O-ring is compromised and not doing a good job, oil is going to want to squeeze that leak out over here like crazy and run down into this whole area right here, which is where I was seeing a lot of oil. It's nice and clean now because I cleaned it all up. So the other thing I noticed was when I was cleaning the saw and the parts washer, was I tried putting the hose from the parts cleaner as, as best as I could, I tried putting it almost over this nipple. And I didn't see anything coming out of there. Then, I held the hose right over this. Basically forcing the fluid being pumped by the parts washer right into that orifice. And of course, a lot of it was escaping. But still, I didn't see a drip even coming out of here. I might have a blockage right along this tube right here. But I'm also wondering whether or not, you know, that I saw that little thing that can be unscrewed there. I'm wondering if there's some sort of a, a check valve or a spring or some sort of metering valve. In other words, could that screw actually be an adjustment that you adjust to actually meter the flow of oil out of here? I don't, I don't know. So easy way to figure that out is just to take that screw out. Uh, like I said, that housing is cracked right there, so I'm going to want to investigate that anyways. That's a, by the way, the, the crack right there could also be where oil's coming out, but I'm hoping that the crack is confined to just the very end of the tube where that, in other words, that part screws in, and I'm hoping that the crack is confined to just the, the side of that housing behind the threads and that part. I'm also wondering about this area right down in here. This little channel right here was completely filled with oil-soaked sawdust. All this crud right here, I just pulled out of that little area of openings or orifices. So I don't know if this is supposed to be an opening somewhere over here that is clogged, or whether or not these are just spaces that just become filled with I mean there's got to be a, why why would this be made this way there's got to be a purpose well I say there's got to be but I mean I just want to think there is a reason behind this being designed the way it is yeah so I mean it's funny that all of these little openings here are just completely packed with oily sawdust residue but apparently they don't do anything this is all just pointless. <laughs> it appears that all the oil is supposed to come out here where I thought. So, uh, matter of fact, what you can even do is if you're diagnosing an oiling problem, you can actually take the bar off your saw and take the saw outside, start it up, and run it, and you'll see oil will actually pour out of here. You know, not squirt out. It'll it'll just pour out and run right down here. And that's normal operation. If, if you've got oil there and your bar's not oiling, then your bar's probably clogged. That little hole I showed you on the bar or the track itself on the bar. They even make a special tool for cleaning that track. I, I don't have one. Anything that'll fit in there and clean that out. So I'm going to make sure my bar is all good and clean. But I am going to take that screw out there because I don't think 
that there's anything as far as any kind of a metering valve or anything inside that because there is an adjustment on the pump. I forgot to show you that. This screw right here is actually, a, when this pump is installed, that screw, that screw is accessible right through this hole right here. And that's to adjust the flow rate of the automatic oiling system. In fact, on a lot of these saws, there's actually a little symbol here to tell you that, but for some reason I don't see it on this one, which is interesting. But that is what that, what that hole is there for. That hole is so that when the pump is installed on the saw, you can access this screw right here. All right, so this is kind of weird. I took this little plug out. And um, I can't see, it almost looks like it's blocked solid, but I don't think that's debris. I think it's plastic. Oh, no, hold on. Just, I take that back. I just broke through something a little crusty. You know what I can, I wonder if I get a pipe cleaner. I used to have these things called pipe cleaners, um, which you used to use. Back in the day, people used to use them to clean out uh, the stem on a pipe. You know, a pipe that you smoke, right? Of course, not too many people doing that these days. But it's basically just a stiff wire with a, uh, like a cloth, ribbed cloth coating on it. And it's great for cleaning out things like this. So I'm just going to push this wire through and see. Yeah, there's a lot of crunchy noise. I'm going to try and catch whatever falls out of that. See if I can find it. Ah, perfect. So I'm just really curious to see what comes out of the other end of this. If I push this through, see if I can get uh, this to fit in there just to act as a little dustpan. Okay, so it's stopping dead. I think maybe that hole at the other end is not large enough for this wire to fit through because it looks like it's going up right to, yeah it's going right up to that let's see if I let's see if we could feed it the other way all right let's find something smaller well, that's interesting nothing seems to want to fit that way I wonder if there was like a big plug of gunk that I pushed up there and it got stuck. I think I need to find something small enough to go in from this end. It has to be flexible enough to be able to go around that corner. Just for the heck of it, let's see if this will go in that direction. You see, that fits. So why doesn't this go through? Looks like I found something that finally fits in that other orifice. Feel the diameter down the other end there. I mean, could that really be that tight? That's crazy. There we go. Just popped through. All right, let's see what the mystery item is. I think it's wood. I think it's little curled up pieces of wood. That was completely blocked or very blocked, <laughs> if not completely, quite a bit. That explains why no fluid was coming out of that when I had this in the parts washer. Now, this passage right here goes straight down and intersects that passage that I just cleared. So I want to see if there could be something stuck in there too, actually. So close on the diameter on this thing. This wire was just a little bit smaller. Ow! Well, now you did it. You got stuck in there. I could actually see light through there now. When I looked through this end, I could see light getting through there. So that's a good, good sign. There's more coming out. I just pushed. I must have just pushed something that was clogging that line right there down into that main uh, area again so let me uh, let me get my little catch 
I just have this can of precision lubricant handy that's got a straw on it that I want to use to try and see if I can blow some of that stuff back out the other way. Something hanging out of there right now. Yeah, that's another another piece. So I'm getting ready to reassemble this saw and test run it. And uh, I cleaned up the pump here. And I was going to order uh, the parts to rebuild this pump or an aftermarket pump. And then it occurred to me, why don't I just, this isn't that hard to get to. So why don't I just put it together with this pump and uh, worry about any oil leaks or oil delivery problems to the chain uh, after I see whether or not the damn thing's going to run. Right, so I don't want to delay things by waiting for parts to come in and then put them in and then find out that I still have motor problems. But I did uh, want to address this issue of this crack right here. And I actually, this was bothering me last night when I was, uh, when I quit and I was going to sleep and I don't know about you guys, but lots of times I'll sit there and something I was working on or a problem will be in my head and I'll be thinking about it as I'm going to sleep and you know, I don't know if your mind calms down or what ends up happening there. Brain chemistry must change. And sometimes, you know, you start thinking about it and something just doesn't seem right. So then I did a little research and come to find out, apparently, on some saw, steel saw models, um, at the factory there was a plug in here. And I guess that plug can work its way out or fall out. Or for whatever reason, that plug can come out and cause a massive oil leak here. And the repair bulletin that Steele issued was to order a steel part number, which ends up being basically a specially made uh, grub screw, this little screw on the end here, okay? And what's unique about it, it's an M6, I believe, is the size that I ended up seeing that it was. It's an M6 grub screw, uh, but it's short. It's very short, and the idea being that is if you just went and got a standard like M6 grub screw from like the hardware store or, or a supply company, that because it would be longer, there's the possibility that you would screw it in too far and possibly block the uh, port that's down the end here, that's inside there, okay? The other issue is if you screw this in too far, you could crack the housing. Now, this housing already has a crack in it, so I'm wondering whether or not somebody screwed this in too far. It's also interesting to note that when this comes brand new from steel, it has a coating of what looks like almost like blue Teflon paste or something on there to help it seal. Also, the hole originally had no threads, and basically this grub screw may also have a may be unique in design that it actually cuts its own threads might be a self-tapping screw maybe that's part of the deal there i don't know so um this looks like it's the correct one because it looks extra short so i'm going to put some paste on there and insert that and then because when i insert this it's going to spread this crack open and after i insert it then i'm going to clean this area up and i'm going to try and put a little epoxy on the outside here for good measure all right but it got me to thinking, you know that debris I took out last night that I was looking at, I was like, what the heck is that? Well, it now occurs to me that when I looked at it under magnification, it almost looked like it was swarf, plastic swarf. And I think what happened is, I think that stuff was in there ever since this was installed the first time. I think what happened was when this went in there and cut the threads, that plastic Shape, those plastic shavings that are displaced by installing this, they have to go somewhere. And I think they end up in there. And I think they may have been causing a clog. I don't know. Because I thought about it. It's like, how did that get inside there? Don't forget, the pickup tube in the oil tank has a screen on it. So it couldn't have been debris that got in the tank and then ended up getting in the system. So that's my theory anyways, and I'm sticking to it. So I'm going to put this in. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, Teflon uh, paste on here. We're going to put this in here, uh, clean this up, epoxy this, and then reinstall the pump with the old O-rings and everything just so we can get a test run on this thing. 
One other note, uh, I decided not to use the uh, Teflon. I ended up going with the uh, Permatex Ultra Black because I still had some on hand. This is uh, the Permatex formula that has um, maximum resistance to oil. So this is good for oil pans, things like that. So I figure it's a good for this application. Now, uh, the other thing I guess the bulletin said was that when you when you put this this screw in, you're not supposed to actually put it in too far. They don't want you to screw it in too far because of the danger of, of getting in that way of that port and also cracking the housing. So they actually recommend that you leave this sticking out like one thread. Um, I'm noticing this is really loose going in there, and that's probably because this is already cracked. So um, hopefully my silicone is going to cure, and that will act to hold that in there better. Now, what I decided to use for a, uh, an epoxy is this Plastade stuff that I have. This is multi-purpose repair plastic. Uh, I don't remember what this was originally marketed under, the trade name it was originally marketed under, but I, I've used this, uh, I started using this well over 20 years ago uh, when I was working in the electronics uh, repair trade, and it's uh, really good stuff. And I was really glad to find out that they were still making it. They just had changed the name to Plastade, but it's the same formulation. And what it is is it comes with a, uh, it's a two-part. It comes with a powder, and then it comes with uh, the liquid. And you measure out as much powder as you need for your repair or you think you're going to need, and then you wet it to the consistency that you want with the liquid. It turns into a uh, paste, and uh, you spread it on and let it cure, and it, it works really well. So, I'm not sure if I got that in the shot or not, but... So if you're looking for a good thing for plastic repairs, again, this is called Plastaid. This is made by the Plastaid Corporation. They have got a website, www.plastaid.com, and as far as I know, it is still available. This is part number 80400. I also really like uh, DevCon, that's D-E-V-C-O-N the DEVCON line of plastic epoxies. I have some of that, but what I have is I have the uh, the, the plunger type. Um, and what I found with that is that has a certain shelf life. Once you open it, the shelf life diminishes. And I, I don't want to open that big tube for a very little job like this, um, because I know it'll probably be a while before I'll get around to using the rest of it. And then when I go to use it, I'll find out that it's no good. Kind of like uh, JB Weld putty, if you've ever used that before. Um, yeah, the tube's real resealable that you put the putty back into, but when you go to take it out and use it after a while, you find out that it's turned into basically something that is no longer putty consistency at all. and kind of gets all crusty and useless. So, anyways, oops, a little measuring thing. Yeah, I do not like that. Back in the day when they sold this stuff, it was called Plasti Pear. It just came to me. Plasti pair, and and when they sold it back then, it came in a cardboard box, and it came with the uh, two glass bottles, um, which now use plastic for this. This chemical probably would eat the plastic, so that's probably why they still have to use a glass bottle for this. But it came with an eyedropper, a little eyedropper, which made it a lot easier um, and less messy. I mean, I, I never use that to mix the stuff in because, of course, any residue would harden in there and make it, you know. So, anyways, I digress. You know, like you find a bottle cap, an old soda bottle cap or something like that. I just used this lid because it was handy. Mix it up in there and apply it. Sets up pretty quickly, uh, but the full cure time is like 24 hours or something like that. I don't even know if that's leaking from that crack. For all I know, maybe when that, you know, that screw is inserted in there and and it's it might be inserting in far enough that that crack isn't even an issue. All right, so you guys from my earlier videos have seen what the reassembly process is, so I'm not going to I'm going to stop this video here and we'll pick it up once I get this all back together unless something else uh, comes up that I want to talk about. Oh heck. Well, for crying out loud, if it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Looks like I am going to have to hold off on finishing this repair because this gear on the oil pump is trashed. 
And I didn't notice it when I was taking it out, but upon further close examination, the threads are all messed up. <laughs>